What's going on? It's Glenn and Cameron here at the Corporate Citizen where we teach you how to start businesses. And today we're going to be talking about multiple streams of income. You hear this term on YouTube all of the time. And you'll hear people, I've got like six, I've got seven, I've got eight, I've got 10 multiple streams of income. Honestly, I think they're full of it. I think they're full of BS because here's been my experience with multiple streams of income. Currently, I have my Savage Finance, which is one stream of income, Camera Media Arts, which is another stream of income. I do affiliate marketing, and now I have the car rental business. So I have four streams of income. And here's the thing that you never see with these people. It's like, I got all these streams of income. It is very, very hard to build a passive stream of income. Now, I will give you an example. Go to YouTube and put in Talking Kitty. This guy, his name was Steve something. He actually committed suicide about beginning of the year. Don't know what was going on. Don't know what kind of demons he had. Rest in peace, Steve. But he created this channel, Talking Kitty. And even though he has not made a video in eight months, this channel is still gets constant views because it's essentially it's Steve and his cat Sylvester who has this one tooth. And I don't know how he makes the cats talk because the cats actually, you know, their mouths are moving when he does the voiceover. I don't know how he did that, that. but this YouTube channel, he has not made a video in eight months and it's still getting millions and millions of views. That is really hard to do because this is why I say YouTube isn't a passive stream of income with my videos. My videos go so far that they literally die. And it's been a while on this channel. Savage Finance, I have a few videos that consistently get views, older videos, but not so much on this channel. So having YouTube as a passive stream of income is very, very challenging. But I would put out there that that's the case of a YouTube channel being a source of passive income. And he built it, he, he worked on that channel for years, years and years and years. All right, so here's the thing that I think that you should do if you want to establish multiple streams of income. Number one, you must nail down your first stream of income. Because trying to start five or six or seven streams of income at the same time is an exercise in madness. You wanna know why I'm able to start the car rental business? Because my primary stream, my camera media arts, which is the YouTube money, uh, Savage Finance Consulting, which is the online course money, don't really do that much consulting. Um, one of the things that is that first revenue source, that first stream of income, I've been doing it 12 years. So I know how to manage that and free up a lot of time. Because honestly, if I didn't have this car rental business, I, I have close to a million dollars more in the bank and I will have a lot more free time. So one of the things that you have to have to do is nail down your first stream of income before you even think about moving to your second or third. Because I hear these people throwing it out there as if it is something that you can snap your fingers and make happen. It, it ain't like that, my folks, it's not like that because building multiple streams of income takes time, it takes a strategy. And one of the things that I consistently see on YouTube, and it cracks me up, people making 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month from their side hustle. <laughs> I'm like, so your side hustle makes more money than your main job, which you devote 160 hours plus per month. Consistently, I see many, you, this is something you could do on the, on the side. This is something you could do in the spare time. I see these ridiculous uh, income statements for little to no work. Like, 
You can make 10, you can make 15,000 per month working two to three hours a month. And let's, let's, let's go ahead and dive into that conversation. Okay. As someone who has achieved time freedom, what are you going to do with all this free time? Because I consistently see um, spending time with friends, spending time with family. If you are married and have a wife and small kids, I can see that working out that you develop time freedom where you have enough time to be at home, to be there for your wife, to be there for your kids. I can see that. But if, what if your situation is like mine? You're single. As someone who has developed time freedom time and time again, typically most of the people that you interact and engage with don't have time freedom. So you're still going to be on their schedule. They got to go to work. They've got the guy go to school. They've got things they have to do. They've got things they have to manage. So even though you have achieved time freedom, the majority of your friends have not. Now, fortunately, I am in a good position where the majority of my friends are so well advanced in their career. Like I can call them at work and they can pick up the phone because they don't have those type of jobs where you can't talk on the phone. They're not bus drivers. They're not cooks and stuff like that. But it cracks me up how many people are selling these products. And once again, shout out to my friend, David Dinkins. Sell what people are buying and people want to buy that crap. Here's one of the things that you've got to understand about the marketplace. The marketplace is the marketplace. This is why pussy sells in the marketplace. I don't care if it's crackhead pussy. I don't care if it's young sugar baby pussy. I don't care. Pussy sells. You've got low cost pussy. You have middle road pussy and you have high end pussy. And it all sells because there's a marketplace for it. And I, I use this extreme and graphic example to tell you that the marketplace is not sensible. The marketplace doesn't operate on sensible priorities. Not at all. This is why drugs sell. This is why people are messing with smack. This is why people are smoking weed. This is why people are I don't know if you I don't know if you smoke it or inject crystal meth. I'm unfamiliar with that. But these are really harmful things that people are consuming in great quantities because the marketplace doesn't care if what you're selling is good for them. It, they don't, they don't really care. Just like low grade pussy, low grade pussy, you run a great chance of catching something. And one of the things, and one of the reasons is the low grade pussy, since it's so cheap, it has a higher frequency. Uh, this is a little weird. I'll go into this conversation. One of my girlfriends back in the day was a call girl. And I actually went through with that just to see what it would like to be with someone that I know was fucking other people. I know she was fucking other people, right? And I, I was like, let, let me see how this goes. And we, we develop a relationship. And here's the thing. She was more on the high end. She didn't work as much as she thought she would because she never lied to me. You know, she was working. She said she was working. And um, she would do have like one or two dates per week. And she had a, a routine of regular customers. So it wasn't like this pussy was getting a lot of new dick. And ultimately we went on and she's like you know she fell in love and she's like i'll stop doing that for you and i was like no 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 keep doing you because i wasn't feeling the same kind of way you know just wasn't feeling like i was going to marry this chick but i use this as a graphic example to tell you that the marketplace doesn't care and this is why these folks are selling you this crap like you could go ahead and develop these multiple streams of income. Like I feel 24 months from now, 24 months from the day, not 24 months from five months ago, but 24 months from the day, which almost 30 months. I feel that 30 months in the future, the car rental business will be an extremely lucrative source of revenue. But 
right now, well, last three months, not the last, not this month, the last three and a half months, it was a complete shit show. Not, it's kind of like, you know, it's, I've learned how to manage it. And this is another thing with multiple streams of income. You've got to learn how to manage it. I already know how to manage my YouTube business. I already know how to manage my Savage Finance Consulting business. And I'm really getting a firm grasp on the car rental business. And I got to set it up where we're closed on Sundays because I got a lot of people. I had three people bring cars back on Sundays. And I, I got to get out of that. But I also feel that I'm not ready for that because we're still starting. So we got to get business wherever we can get business. But once again, I just told you that I'm looking at 30 months to build out my core savage YouTube affiliate, my fourth passive stream of income, 30 months. And here on YouTube, people act like if you got to work more than a week or two, eh, it's a scam. <laughs> it should be working in a week or two. It should be that. And here's the reality. And this is why I am open and honest with you guys talking about business. Like I have spent five months building the foundation because, see, I haven't really got into the car rental business on the level that I want to get onto. I am building the foundation. First thing is, first thing I had to do, which what cars will people want to rent? That's the first question I had to answer. The second question, what price will people consistently rent? That's something that I'm doing right now. So it's going to take me 30 months, let's say 24 to 30 months to hammer out this fourth passive stream of income. And I get, you know, people, I'm not mentioning the names cause y'all get upset when I be mentioning names. I'd be mentioning your boy and y'all be like, ah, he, he's done so much for me. He ain't really done shit for you, but y'all be getting mad. So I'm going to say that when someone comes on YouTube and talks about, they've got six, seven streams of income and they will not provide you with one ATM receipt. They will not provide you with one bank account receipt. They will not provide you with a pay stub. They will not provide you with any proof, no proof whatsoever. More than likely, I think that they're lying. I'm going to put that out there. They will not show you. See, you know, I said I got all these cars. Look, I got all these titles. I can prove what I say. I can back it up. Most YouTubers can't, including Graham Stephan. They can't back it up. And one of the things that I'm going to say, if anyone, and you guys should be really, really aware and you should be really careful, anyone comes on YouTube talking about building multiple streams of income in mere months, you should be looking at them with your side eye because they are lying to you. And I'm going to tell you why. And once again, I'm not mentioning no names because people be getting upset and they be getting in their feelings like Kiki all up in their feelings. YouTube, I was watching, go to this channel, uh, Perfection, Penny's Not Perfection or something. It's her, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll link it down in the comments. But she's in the personal finance space. And this girl only has 26,000 uh, subscribers and she made eight thousand dollars last month from her YouTube money. Eight thousand dollars. Twenty six. So when you are looking, because I, I kind of look at people and I look at how how, rev how regularly they pump out content. And I've noticed that some people pump out content on the regular because they are embedded in the YouTube algorithm. So any video they put up, the YouTube algorithm pushes that video out to a lot of people and they make money. And I've seen that some people have done it because he here's the thing, guys, I've been a YouTuber 12 years. I've got friends, YouTube friends who make a million a month, a million a month from YouTube. And this is one of the reasons that you have all of this. You can develop all of these passive streams of income. And there's one YouTuber, I'll mention her name, Sarah Finance. And she sits up there and she talks about it is so easy. 
She uses the words, it's easy to develop affiliate marketing income. One of the hardest things to do on the internet. If you don't have a following, you're not gonna make a lot of money with affiliate marketing. You're not, unless you buy paid traffic. And at that point, you gotta know exactly what you're doing because you're spending money to make money and you've gotta make that work. But this is one of the reasons that so many YouTubers are blatantly lying to you because they could put up a video, seven sources of passive income or seven revenue streams. Or Now, one of the big issues with this is, and I'm not being dismissive and I'm not being overly critical, that many of you guys are not financially savvy to see the bullshit. You know, uh, I had someone who literally, uh, this clown that was lying, that he bought 80 cars in nine months. Okay, I bought 32 cars in three months. Well, 30, actually 36. Buying cars, because here's the thing. On my best days, if I had to go to two dealerships, I could buy two cars in one day because you got to test drive the car, you got to fill out the paperwork, they got to do the registration. So I already know that for him to be in a position to buy 80 cars in nine months, he was literally buying a, a car almost every other day. About every three days, he's buying a car, right? And once again, I'm not trying to be overly critical, but you can only finance, even if you have an 850 credit score, the max amount of cars you can finance is about 15, even with an 850 credit score. And if you have an extremely high income, that changes things a little bit, changes things a lot. So for someone to get 80 cars in nine months, they were already a millionaire. They were already someone that had very high income. They were already someone that more than likely had a company and they were someone that already like had credit lines. And then, you know, I had some people do some research and they found uh, someone up in New Jersey. It was a dealership. It was actually a collection of dealerships that were renting cars on Toro. And I was like, that's not him. Cause this guy said, Hey, had high line cars and this dealership only had Nissans and regular cars. They did not have Highline cars. And once again, I'm, I'm saying this with the most affection I can muster. You guys have got to become more financially savvy because when I actually see these videos and I see someone saying that, oh, you could do this so easy, I actually know how hard it is to do these things. Like I just told you, I have four revenue streams, right? And the first one, like when I was selling my book, Making Money A to Z with self story that was the only thing I was selling. That was it. I had devoted all of my time and energy to selling that book because the more time and energy and the more videos I made, the more I marketed, the more books I sold. I, I, that's the only thing I was selling for about four years. Then someone else was like, hey, you know, you talk about Craigslist. Can you have them a little additional? And I was like, then I wrote Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. Then I wrote a garage sale book and then I wrote some more books. So once again, before you can build your second revenue stream, you got to nail down your first one. Like, let's say your second revenue stream is rental income. How many houses can you buy? <laughs> I know someone with a very high income. She's bought 30, but she makes $400,000 a year. It's a different game. And also when her grandmother died, she got a um, million dollars. That helps, that helps. As the late Paul Harvey used to say, and that's the rest of the story. So once again, you guys have got to become really critical because I had someone that's like, you know, leave him alone, you know, there's some people bigger than you. I'm like, this clown is lying. <laughs> I already know what it takes to be in the position to buy 80 brand new cars in nine months. First of all, this wasn't a person. I already knew it had to be a company. It had to be a company because here, here's another thing. When you're building out multiple streams of revenue and once again, passive income, let that go. Uh, Brian Pineda did a, a video. I haven't watched it, but he's like, why well, stop chasing passive income? 
passive income. You can do, you can get some passive income and if you don't manage it, it will literally fall apart. So that's why there's really nothing passive about passive income. The only thing I will say about pure 100% passive income is dividend stock, which I am not a fan of. And I'll tell you some guys, I'll tell you some, if I played the lottery and I don't, but let's say one day I just like, I'm gonna play the lottery and I hit and I win 50 million, win it, boom. I'm getting 50 million after taxes, just like that. Then I would probably go out and buy $20 million worth of dividend stock because each million is going to bring me 30 to 40,000, let's say 40. So that's going to be 800,000 or um, about 80K, about 70K a month. Because I won the money, I didn't have to work for it. And I was like, bam, I'll just go ahead and throw that 20 million on passive income probably brought 30 million in real estate and call it a day because if i want it because he here's the thing when you work for your money you spend your money differently than when you're blessed with your money when you're blessed with your money this is how you start tricking off and doing crazy stuff but yeah so if i won some money yeah i would look at passive income like if if i won to play the lottery and i got like 50 million i would probably go out and probably get 10 million in, pa in dividend in stock, because that's gonna give about 400,000 a year. And then I would take 40 million and buy apartment complexes. And boom, I'm done. I'm, I'm out, <laughs> you know? That 40 million is probably gonna get me, um, let's say five million a year. So it'll take like eight years for that 40 million to return itself. But who cares? Five million a year? That's more money I make now. <laughs> Five million a year plus depreciation. And I would probably realize a good 3.6 or three, probably 3.8 million of that in my pocket. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So that, that's a whole different conversation. I may even do a video of what I would do if I won $100 million and talk about that. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. I'm writing that down. What I would do with a hundred million. And notice I would not buy any cryptocurrency. Wouldn't have to. I'm already rich. I'm already rich. Wouldn't have to. I would buy safe, secure things like the dividend stock, uh, the apartment complexes, cash out, just cash out. But guys, you know, we're having this conversation. Um, one thing I like about Anton, and we, we've not got a chance to get together, but we're, that's going to happen in the future, is he preaches hard work. And I heard him say, as a man, you should be working minimum 60 hours a week. And I 100% agree with that. I agree with that because before this car rental business, I was working like 20 hours a week. But once again, I paid my dues. Uh, I actually had a business. I was working like six, seven days a week, story auction business. So this whole thing about multiple streams of income when you don't even have, and also here's something else too. If you would look at the billionaire class and there's only like 2,600 of them, there's only 2,600 of them on the planet. You will see that the majority of them got most of their money from one thing. And then once they got a whole bunch of money, that's when they started diversifying. On their way up, they did not diversify. Uh, on their way up, what did Apple do? Apple sold computers. And then when Apple got to a certain position, it's like, okay, let's introduce the iPhone. And they'll say, hey, that was a hit. Let's introduce the iPad. And that was a hit. And let's go ahead and introduce these iPhones, iPads. Oh, let's do the watch. So when Apple got to sitting on a gang of money, then they started diversifying. And they started diversifying and, and increasing their revenue streams. So that's the game. If you go ahead and study billionaires and look at them, you will see the majority of them was in one industry for the first 20, 20 years. 
20 years typically, because it, it takes a few decades to build a fortune. It really does. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this conversation and we're getting ready to do a lot of stuff in the corporate papers. So if you're not in the corporate papers, you need to go ahead and get in there. Today is the 20th of September. So 10 more days, the price goes up and I'm going to introduce a lot more things next month. I'm keeping them in my back pocket. So go below, hit that link and I will see you guys in the next video.